So here we already have basically the premise of what this album's about. Now this comes after um, the previous album Fall From Grace and it's before um, the album The Offering which I have uh, reviewed both of them albums. Now uh, The Offering was a concept album that told a story about a cult of people who sacrificed um, children um, to this uh, spiritual being in order um, to keep the earth alive and uh, give them good lives. They would sacrifice these kids in order to achieve this. And um, as the story progressed, uh, one of the kids comes back and then uh, seeks his revenge. Now in the review I didn't say that uh, because uh, I got it wrong, but uh, overall I did get the gist of the story, but near the end I uh, got lost. Um, so with Purgatory, this album, this was their first concept, so it wasn't the offering, this album Purgatory is the first concept. Now as you could tell from the beginning, we had a really creepy start, so you have that uh, hospital heartbeat monitor and then you could hear a baby crying and then you hear the flatline um, noise of uh, someone dying. Now this first track is called Past the Veil and um, the story is basically, the lyrics for this is just uh, building the story so what we have is uh, we had the mum's heartbeat being registered as she's giving birth to this uh, little girl and uh, you heard the baby come out um, as you heard the crying and then as the heart you know dies and it flatlines uh, the mum dies uh, giving birth to this girl. Now uh, past the veil um, I think is uh, from the mum's perspective or maybe the uh, baby's. Um, it's hard to say which because I do know that uh, this singer does keep jumping between characters. So with uh, Unleash the Archers, um, their newest album um, they did have multiple characters, but you could tell when they changed. So you had uh, Britney kind of just singing the narrative, and then um, you would have uh, the bad guy, um, the um, matriarch, and uh, she would be screamed, and that would be her lines. And then you'd have so um, a male vocalist who uh, spoke um, a line of uh, one of the uh, brothers near the end. Or with uh, the album American Idiot, um, that album is completely told by in the uh, perspective of uh, the Jesus of Suburbia, so we always know who's talking. But with this album, um, as well as even the offering, uh, the lead singer keeps changing. So by track by track, it's someone completely different, and then you're completely confused of who are we, whose perspective is this, and it's very confusing. But uh, yeah, basically past the veil, um, the baby's been born, the mum's died in childbirth, and uh, the lyrics is basically going along the kind of lines as uh, someone's missing the present so it's like I feel emptiness inside me so technically I think it's the mum's perspective basically um, feeling empty and this life um, is now out of her and um, the feeling of that and uh, the feeling she's about to uh, disappear and she's really upset about it of course because uh, her child She's not going to see her at all or anything, so uh, she's now lost this child. She felt her inside of her, and then the second she's out, she doesn't feel the connection anymore. And um, she won't because she's fading into darkness. And uh, she dies before she can really kind of see or feel her baby girl. And that's sort of the kind of uh, idea of uh, Past the Veil. Um, and yeah um going through uh the sound of this album uh the offering was very grand with uh like uh orchestra um stuff uh, choir singers and they had a fair few things going on but um yeah um with this album um it's very dark so uh the offering obviously it was very theatrical uh, very kind of big in concept uh Fall From Grace had a lot of heavy key sounds, so it was a very kind of bright and um, energetic uh, feel to that. But Purgatory, this album is unbelievably dark. 
So I found this the hardest to get into personally because Fall From Grace is very kind of got bright stuff to it and heaviness and great solos and great vocals. The offering just is unbelievably huge in their sound and concept. Great, uh, you know, lyrical idea, even though it's a bit difficult to follow. Great uh, lyrics, great solos again. And so this is just unbelievably dark. Now the offering was also dark, but they have the kind of keys and the orchestrations and the choir to kind of just brighten it up a bit. It is kind of still dark, but it has like a niceness to it. And so Purgatory is just moody as all hell. They say there's more keys in this album than Fall From Grace, but I don't really feel that. I kind of feel that this is a very dry album. They don't really have or orchestrations or choir or that much in the way of heavy keys that was in Fall From Grace. The keys are probably present, but they're not intense. It's just they're trying to make a very dark sound, so it's quite dry and just bare bones and kind of basic. It doesn't have much of an identity just apart from just being very, very dark and moody sounding. So uh, you get a solo uh, off the bat with this track. I believe Purgatory, you have a solo in near enough every single track, which is good. Apart from maybe the odd one, I think, uh, wherever the melodic track is, which might be My Peace or Darkest Sin. I'm not too sure which one the melody is, but I don't believe there's a solo in that one. But other than that, I think there is a solo in actually every single track, so uh, that's a good thing. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, lyrically the first track. It's a very dark sounding album. There's not a lot of bright keys to it. The keys are kind of there and they do say there's trumpets and things in here, but um, it's hard to hear just because it's a very kind of broody, kind of thick, uh, creepy sound. It's still got melody to it, but it's just a very dark melody. Like this is a very menacing, broody album. It's very dark and not overly musical, but I don't think you really want to be musical about the entire concept of this album. It would just be a bit difficult. So the next track, um, From the Ashes. Now this, I believe, is from the father's perspective. I'm pretty sure of this. And this is basically saying that um, he's struggling. He's had many, many years with his wife and he loves her loads. And this child, this pathetic little thing has been bloody born and has murdered the love of his life. This vulgar thing is a murderer and took his loved one away from him. So he's drinking away, he sees nothing. And there is a line in the lyrics of this song where it's, uh, I can't quote it, but it is along the lines of, um, I see nothing of you in her. She is basically just a monster to me. Uh, there's a female guest in this track, which uh, you could hear her in the offering. Uh, the final track, uh, she was there in track 8 maybe on the offering. She was also there. She's called uh, D or something. D something. Uh, but she was a special guest on the offering. She's now um, also here. And she's singing on behalf of the mother. So there's a small section in this song, uh, which is the mother. And... Um, that's kind of uh, the mum saying um, the fault lies not in her, so it's not her fault and I hope you love her, but the dad, no, dad hates her, thinks she's a monster, doesn't see anything and um, hates her and that's kind of it. Uh, the chosen one um, is now from the girl's perspective. Basically uh, saying that she's sick of all these lies. So the dad is basically lying to her about um, killing the mum and it's her fault and calling her all sorts of things. So um, I'm sick of his lies. So that's uh, basically what that's about. And um, I don't really feel accepted. I don't feel a part of this world. I want to be with my mother. I feel that she was an amazing person and I felt connected with her. But um, this world and my dad, I don't feel connected and I feel kind of rejected. So, um, yeah, um, she says she goes to school and um, they have no idea that it's her final day. And she's saying her goodbyes to them. Now we can obviously now clearly know where this is going. Now the title's called The Chosen One because it's sort of uh, saying that um, in my dreams, I'm the chosen one. 
So, uh, it, it's hard to know, but to be, in my opinion, I think it is meaning that um, the dad is obviously making her out to be a horrid person and the, and murdered the mum and the mum hates her and, you know, stuff like that. But in her dreams, she's the chosen one, so she's the one who the mum really loves, who the mum's connected to. So she's the chosen one. She's the one who's going to go and um, basically bring peace. Um, when she dies, she's, she'll be bring peace to him because uh, the dad won't have to put up with her. She'll go and reconnect with the mother. She'll be connected, so she's the chosen one. She is, has the power and the ability to make everything right again in her death. So that's kind of how I believe it goes. Um, Destiny, again, I think um, might be uh, from the girl's perspective. And uh, it's basically um, just um, saying um, my destiny is obviously to die and everything and um, my dad will get his wish. I am going to um, die. He wants me dead. Your wish is granted. I'll grant that for you. I will kill myself. And that's uh, kind of uh, the way destiny goes and uh, things. So, um, yeah, uh, destiny is uh, probably the heaviest out of uh, the first few we get. Um, so it is got quite kind of heaviness to the intro and things. And again, great solo. The solo of Destiny is a very melodic um, solo. It's really, really nice. Uh, the next track, Darkest Sin, um, this is actually, so I made a mistake, this is where um, she says she's going to grant her dad um, his wish and uh, kill herself. And uh, the fact this is going to be her darkest sin that she's uh, committing, she is committing suicide. Um, she says she's tried reaching for his uh, love and affection, but overall it has kind of failed. And uh, she, he has pushed her to this edge, um, so because of him and how uh, he's made her feel, this is kind of why she's having to go through with this. So um, I don't think she wishes bad on him either. Um, she kind of just uh, wishes um, that um, in her death um, that he basically kind of finds peace. But um, overall, she's tried with him, it's failed. Um, he's pushed her, pushed her to this, and in death, hopefully, he just becomes a, a, able to kind of live his life again instead of uh, just blaming her and they're being miserable and drinking constantly. Uh, Darker Sin is the uh, melody, so it's. Uh, Melodic for the most part, and then at the end it has a bit of a build up that uh, maintains its kind of uh, uh, melodic nature and everything. But uh, no solo, uh, not much to it. It's uh, just, again, just a very kind of dark meaning of just um, a girl just uh, wanting to be loved by her dad, but overall failing in uh, doing so. And uh, because uh, her dad doesn't love her and treats her so poorly and everything, um, it's driven her to want to kill herself. And she doesn't even wish that bad on him. I don't think uh, she blames him at all. She understands uh, he loved um, her mother, his wife. So it's a dark track. Uh, mostly all the tracks are uh, bloody uh, dark as all hell. But um, it's a nice track. Like It's melodic and it's got um, some kind of violin um, stuff to it. And uh, yeah, it's a sweet old track. It's just very dark and very depressing. So uh, next track we got My Peace. So My Peace is um, difficult because uh, the verses I'm not sure if that's the dad and uh, the choruses I'm not sure if that's the girl. Um, it's very hard because uh, the first verse is uh, basically talking about um, some woman leaving and um, a girl being in an empty room, so it's and uh, she left with a stranger. So it's like, is it the girl speaking that the mum left with a stranger, be it God, and uh, all he has is a girl in an empty room, and there's just nothing there, or is it the girl just saying, uh, why did my mum leave me with God, and I'm just left here in an empty room? So 
I'm not sure about that one, but that is basically the first uh, part. Uh, the first chorus is um, the girl saying, uh, dear mother or my mother, um, basically take me to a better place, uh, take me away from this hell, which is basically life. And um, I hope to find you there, just bring me peace and everything. And I uh, hope we live well together. The second verse um, is saying, um, I'm trying to drink it away, everything's fading. Now it's just like, I know the dad is a heavy drinker, so I don't know if it's basically him saying how he drinks uh, so much. And um, he's just kind of losing hope massively. Or if it's the girl is actually drunk something that's killing her. And uh, she's losing the light as she's now fading it, uh, to her death. Not sure about that. Uh, the second chorus is not my mother, but my father. So this is the girl now speaking to the father. And um, it's, um, again, just saying how she just uh, can't really stand it there anymore. And that uh, she wants to leave. And uh, she uh, disappears onto uh, the next place. Now the really creepy, creepy part is there's a little girl that comes in and she is speaking as the girl a message she has left to her dad. Now this is very creepy because she's not singing, she's not being beautiful, it's just a very innocent girl's voice basically reading her suicide note to her dad. And there's all these kind of like chimes going off, the band's not going all bloody degents and they're bloody banging their heads around and they're sweet picking or anything. It's uh, just all these real light key tones and everything, trying to make everything quite kind of bright but not uh, thicken the sound up at all. So the message uh, kind of starts, Dad, um, I'm leaving, um, I don't blame you for what you have become and what you have made me and um, she doesn't hate him at all for it, she doesn't hate him for what he is, what he's become, what he's made of her and um, she's going to a better place as uh, she hopes the best for him and um, yeah that's it, um, just basically saying I don't hate you for what you are, what you've become and what you've done to me and I'm now leaving to a better place and then uh, the last chorus is back to the mother um, you know, take me away, take me to this uh, better place. Um, there's a kind of key lead after the solo in this song, which is uh, really nice. Um, so the uh, guitar solo again, absolutely phenomenal, and then the key kind of lead after it. It's actually quite bright and uh, a bit fun as well, but obviously with the tone and there's still kind of the rest of the band doing the kind of creep uh, vibe and everything and dark stuff. So. It's just like, this is kind of bright and everything, but dear God, this is dark. <laughs> so it, it was a weird contrast. Uh, nicely done, though. I uh, appreciate, you know, the kind of two contrasts of this is quite bright and nice, but oh my God, this is dark. Um, so that's kind of nice. Again, the girl coming in, I think, uh, was absolutely perfect. It would be kind of weird because obviously the male singer is singing a lot from the uh, little girl's perspective and he doesn't sound like a little girl, so uh, if he was to go, Dad, I'm sorry, and everything, it would probably come across as a little kind of cringy, a bit awkward, so making it a girl just really hits you and it really connects because it's such an innocent girl's voice and you know she's reading her death note to her dad who drove her to kill herself. And this girl, I don't even know, I don't think she's in her teens, she's probably like, I don't know, but if I'm going off the picture, then gosh, she could be fucking eight. So, uh, an eight-year-old killing herself and her death note, she is reading it to us. So, it is so damn dark. And um, it, it's intoxicating. Like, you're just so interested and invested in this story. It's just like, this is, you know, really... I don't want to say cool, even though it is cool and everything. I don't want to say this is cool because a girl's killed herself and I enjoy this t sort of thing. I am not saying that, but it's just such an interesting concept. It's not real, <laughs> you need to know that. So I'm not into this happening. It hasn't happened, it's just, you know, the music with it and then the story and then the girl doing the note and everything, it's good 
storytelling, you know, if you will watch it in a movie, just because you watch horror movies doesn't mean you enjoy people dying and you get off on it. It's just, you know, entertainment, not entertainment people. I don't know how the hell to explain this now. Um, I'm going to get out of this because I think I really freak people out, uh, but yeah, it, it's lyrically really uh, well done. I do like the fact that they did bring a little girl in to just make it that much more and put so much emphasis on it. So um, yeah, it's really, really cool. So uh, next track, Place of Darkness. So Place of Darkness, uh, I'm not sure if she is kind of dead and she's trapped in some kind of dark place. Uh, if I'm being honest about what I'm thinking um, is happening in this track is uh, she's basically awoken, her, she's opened her eyes and um, it's black and she's hearing screams. No, what I'm thinking is she hasn't actually died, not yet at least. She's actually in the hospital hearing kind of uh, screams of um, other patients and things and um, She's saying it's a dark place, she's still trapped here in uh, the light and she wants the light to go and um, take her away. And um, she's uh, calling for her mum and everything, but she's not there. And she wants to reach towards her mum and, uh, you know, kind of disappear, disappear onto the other side because at the minute she's obviously not in a great place. Uh, she's in hospital, she's in a lot of agony and stuff. There's the threat that uh, they will actually pull her through and keep her uh, trapped there. And uh, she's hopeful that she'll go to the other side, but she's not sure she's going to get there. And even when she is, um, if her mum will be there or not. So I think that's the concept lyrically. Now, um, again, the band obviously have that kind of dark tone to them. And uh, it sounds creepy, but... Uh, Obviously the band has such an amazing talented sound like the uh, lead uh, guitar stuff and the rhythms and everything and then the vocals are just so catchy, just so amazing, they sound awesome even though it is dark. Uh, the solo at the end, uh, it's not even much of a solo, it's actually quite kind of bland and basic but it's actually the tone he's using and what he is doing at the end of the song it just sounds just so relaxed, so nice, has an amazing tone to it, and it's just like, it's such a peaceful end to the track, and he's not doing a lot. Now I think it is a solo, but he didn't want to overplay it or do much, he just wanted a nice kind of calm, relaxed kind of close, and that is kind of what it is. There is stuff to it, but not, you know, kind of what you expect out of, you know, a really gifted uh, solo which has a lot of stuff going on um, nothing like that but it has great tone it is really sweet nice uh, and uh, simple so uh, it's good but it's not you know anything technical but I think I think it's fine so I would kind of like to hear if uh, you know one of you think no, I would kind of liked more or if, you know, that was actually a really sweet closure to something really short, simple and it's just so soothing and nice. So, I would be interested in uh, what uh, people are uh, going to say to that. So, uh, the next track is Welcome to Eternity. Welcome to Eternity, again, I could have gotten this wrong bleep, ages ago um, because lyrically it is really difficult to follow. I have looked up the lyrics, I've read through them, I talked to my girlfriend about them and just like, do you have any idea what this is about? And then it's just like, I have no idea, or um, kind of. And then I just state what I think, and then she says, well, you kind of have a story, I just have pieces. So, because of that, um, basically it's just whatever the hell I thought, because I actually brought up a story concept. Now, I do know the singer does say, uh, the song is about um, a girl and a dad and a mum. The mum died, girl lived, dad hates the girl, he's a heavy drinker, she kills herself. And then the end, which I'm not going to spoil because I haven't got there yet. So technically the whole kind of concept, I I do have it because the lead singer has actually said this. Um, so it's basically just what each track is trying to say. That's uh, where I, I'm struggling. But um, I may be completely right. Um, some tracks I may be right, others I may not be. So I'm going to say that in case if someone comes and goes, you don't know shit and I'm an idiot. Um, I'm just telling you now. I could have had it wrong, so if you say you had it wrong, you're an idiot. 
Well, I've already said that just now, so there you go. So, um, Welcome to Eternity, I think, is, um, she's saying she's lying there and everything, she's hearing the screams and everything, and Welcome to Eternity, so I think uh, the concept is she's lying there in hospital and there's all these screams and wails of all the other uh, patients in agony and pain, and she's trapped there in pain and everything, and it's just miserable, it's depressing. And uh, she says, welcome to eternity, because she feels like she's going to be stuck here forever. It feels like eternity, uh, being trapped here in the pain, uh, the screams of uh, the others and everything. Now, for all I mean, she could be lying in kind of um, a limbo um, state, where she, she actually has died and gone on, but she's trapped between heaven and hell. She's in this limbo, as I said, and um, it could be the screams of all the, pe all, all the damned people who were already kind of dead and everything and she feels like she's going to be trapped there for eternity and she's lost and she's trying to find her mum. That could also be something, but it's just uh, with each the other tracks, I'm, I'm not really kind of fixing a full story. So the way I kind of have it, I've got a story connected. So that's kind of why I'm going with this, um, because I, I, what um, that's my cohesive story. The other stuff, I've kind of got pieces where it could be something else, but then I don't have something gluing it together. So, uh, yeah, I think Welcome to Eternity, she's just kind of stuck in uh, the hospital and it feels like eternity. As I say, it could be wrong. Um, so, and uh, with the next two tracks, I don't know if she has actually died yet. So that kind of pulled me back of, wait, I don't think she's dead. And then second to last track, it's just like, well, that's her limbo. So it's, it's very confusing um, to follow. Like, uh, Unleash the Archers, that is a piece of piss to follow. It's just so basic. It's just a narration of what's happening. It's not jumping between characters and using all these big kind of fancy words. It's just a really basic, easy to follow narrative. Um, not to say that the narrative is bad. Like the whole idea and the concept is really great. It's just um, it's told in a way which I'm struggling a little. So uh, I'm not complaining, but I am a tad. <laughs> so I like it and I appreciate it and I really do like this concept. I just, I'm, I'm just struggling to follow it, that is it. So, it's great, but not perfect. No, it has grand parts to Welcome to Eternity. The After the uh, chorus, uh, the second chorus, uh, you have a great kind of uh, rhythmic uh, energy with the kind of guitars and the, just the rest of the band. It has great energy to it. You get a solo again, and it's just uh, this amazingly huge anthemic solo. Um, doesn't last overly long. I, again, could t take it with being longer, but I love long blue solo, so I'm sure um, most people will be uh, acceptable with it. It's great, it is a fantastic solo. It's just, um, I think it could have been longer, and I want it to be longer, because the guy is just brilliant as a guitarist. So, um, and he kind of ends uh, the song uh, with a the solo. There's a bit after it, I think. But uh, yeah, you got that amazing kind of uh, rhythmic energy of that kind of band, and uh, after the chorus, the bridge kind of section, then you do get a solo as well. And uh, like you got the kind of plays. So when the singer's not really doing his stuff, and um, it's not simple chords and everything, it is all still very big, amazing, epic sounds. And leads and plays and everything sounds incredible. It's got a dark mood to it, but it's got a bit of kind of childlike, happy quality to it. It's very weird. It's creepy and it is dark, but it has that like sweet innocence about it, and uh, quite special the way they kind of accomplish that because it is dark, but there is a sweetness to it because it's a little girl just trying to find her mum and that is a touching story so there is touching qualities in their playing but overall it is very dark in tone and that kind of persists through the whole album even though some tracks are uh, verses of just melodic or you have a melodic track and then some songs are actually kind of heavier than others and then some um, are more catchy than others and everything it always maintains that creepy vibe with uh, the you know kind of sweet innocent uh, kind of subdued uh, mood to it so um, very special but uh, anyway moving on let's get on to the next track Sacrifice so Sacrifice seems to be the girl talking to her dad which is why I kind of said that uh, the previous tracks even though she may be stuck in limbo and just hearing the screams of the dam but uh, with Sacrifice it definitely seems that she's actually talking to her dad 
And I just kind of think, well, why would you be talking to him now? And things. And then the next track is called Rest My Child, which is, I think, from the dad's perspective. So it doesn't make sense. So um, that's kind of why I say she's kind of in hospital now. Sacrifice, I believe the dad's now kind of seen her and everything. And um, it's an angry sounding track because uh, lyrically it is basically the girl having a go at her dad. Saying, where were you when I took my final step, which was obviously when she committed suicide, he wasn't there. And she's reached for him, gotten nothing. Um, was it worth it to satisfy your anger doing all of this, saying all this absolute crap to me? Was it worth it in the end? Did it bring you peace? Did it quench your anger? Are you happy about what you did? Because here I am, I've sacrificed my life in order to get away from you and to go be with my mother. So, are you happy about it? You were not even there for me in the end. So, it's, lyrically that is basically what she is kind of saying. So, I don't know if she's saying that now because she's been trapped in um, purgatory and limbo and uh, now she's kind of angry because she's just so alone and everything and she's here because of what the dad did. So now she's angry. Or if uh, she's saying this at the hospital with uh, the dad you know, um, actually now being here and she is now opening up to him is uh, she's uh, nearing death again. So um, that is uh, kind of the gist of sacrifice, of saying I've sacrificed it all and everything and uh, you've just been a massive dick and uh, you've done all of this to make yourself feel bloody better. So did you? Because was it really worth it for all of this? You killed me and everything. It didn't bring mum back you're now completely alone and you weren't even there for me in the end so you don't even have that to go with so that's it so I hope you're happy about it so she's a bit mad clearly um, and angry there's a keyboard solo first uh, after the second chorus I believe then there is a solo that lasts a fair decent while at the end of the uh, song and I think it kind of just uh, just actually ends with his uh, guitar solo both solos really nice, the guitar one being better just because he's a phenomenal guitarist. And um, yeah, there's a fair bit to it. Um, it has melody, it doesn't just kind of go in for a shred, it's just a bit of melody. It has a kind of few kind of ideas to it and things. But uh, the track overall sounds quite kind of aggressive and angry. So next we actually get Arrest My Child, which I believe is from the father's perspective. So Rest My Child is kind of from the dad's perspective, he's uh, kind of saying um, I look back on the days when you smiled and um, I I'm sorry basically, um, I look back on the days where you used to smile and I'm going to miss them um, and um, I have been wrong so uh, it says Rest My Child um, kind of before you go I just want you to know that I was wrong. Um, and he uh, says, um, as you fade away, so will I. I've lost my wife and I'm going to lose you too, so I'm going to kind of become nothing. And um, he still says, um, I'm running away, I can't take, I can't take this anymore. So he's losing his mind because now he's losing his baby girl. So, um, yeah, he's deeply regretting uh, what he's gone and done, what he's accomplished, what he's achieved, what he's said. He's put his girl there and everything and um, rest my child and you are going to basically start life anew in the afterlife. So you start your life again but um, he keeps uh, saying how wrong he is and everything and to, for her to rest and um, he's running away, I'm running away, I can't, I can't take this anymore. And that's the interesting thing, he says, it's not I can't take this anymore and that's it, he says I can't, I can't take this anymore. So um, he's really struggling to uh, cope with this. Now it starts melodic uh, um, for the most part until about halfway into the song and then it just blows up into the first lead guitar solo and holy god does he come in and the tone he uses and just how amazing it sounds and the nice epicness of the tone and he soars it in and then he speeds through and then it's just incredible tones and melody and it's just like Jesus Christ you are phenomenal um, and then it uh, goes back into the chorus of rest now my child I'm running away I'm running away I can't take this anymore and then the drums are just going ballistic and then the singer gets even 
um, higher and higher pitch as he's just saying, I can't take this anymore, I'm running away, I can't, I can't, I can't take this anymore. And then it ends on again another solo, which is just more kind of a, a melodic uh, melody of a solo. Not melodic melodies in this stripped down basic, it's just a really, really nice uh, sounding solo. And uh, so great solos and everything, and they're great build, but um, yeah, it's good to know that the dad is obviously sorry and uh, he's going to miss his girl, but obviously he's kind of fucked his life as well as his baby girl, so I don't really know if that's really a good ending, really, because uh, if anything, she was going to die and he could have just hated her till the end, but he didn't, so at least there's something. So let's get into the next one, Purgatory. So Purgatory is the title track of the album and uh, again it's quite heavy um, and it's uh, basically she's trapped in Purgatory, she's stuck in a dark place, uh, not really in heaven nor in hell, so she's just kind of stuck and uh, lost and um, yeah, uh, the vocalist is uh, delivering quite uh, forcefully, it's quite aggressive, the rest of the band are uh, quite uh, heavy and uh, brutal. The chorus, um, he sings it in a pretty high pitch and everything, and uh, the solo again is really good. You got um, bright keys that uh, follow after the solo, but uh, that is mostly it. It's uh, quite basic, uh, the track, just uh, heavy, aggressive. The chorus, uh, the singer gets quite high pitch and everything. Good solo, keys come after it, and then lyrically, she's just trapped in purgatory and she's uh, just lost, and uh, that is uh, mostly it. Um, she may be falling to hell and uh, descending. This is um, a place where a lot of souls get kind of stuck and trapped. So uh, that is mostly it for Purgatory. So uh, the next track is the final track, which is Revelation. So this track's uh, quite short, just uh, 3 minutes uh, 50 seconds. It starts very softly and then it uh, goes into a melody and that's uh, pretty much the first verse. And um, basically it's just... Um, you are the picture that I uh, saw, you're the person I've been looking for, so yeah, she's found the mum now, and um, yeah, the uh, first uh, verse is, uh, lyrically is just there, uh, basically, uh, it's the picture I've been looking for, you're who I've been looking for, I found you. Uh, the chorus um, cheers it up a bit, uh, it's uh, quite kind of upbeat and uh, tempoed, it's more in the upbeat um, fun energy but that darkness still lingers so uh, it's kind of changed over the majority of the album has always had this very dark vibe but with a very innocent kind of sound to it it's a very pretty sound but it was deep and kind of buried in there as for now the darkness has kind of uh, shrunk a little bit but it's still there and the majority of the chorus is a bit more kind of brighter compared to the rest of the album so it's switched a bit because it's still a dark thing but it's obviously a nice end it's supposed to be a good ending maybe not really anyway um so um there's great leads uh in between uh breaks and everything so uh the intro again, um, good build up to it. After that uh, first chorus, you get a great kind of sounding lead again. The solo is absolutely beautiful. It is amazingly uh, done. Great tone as per always, and sounds absolutely amazing. Uh, the chorus uh, lyrically is just um, take my hand, uh, don't leave me, and um, just um, I don't want to lose you. And uh, we're together. Hold my hand and just never let go. So that's basically a uh, revelation, they find each other, they take each other's hands and they don't really want to lose each other if one lets go, who knows if uh, they'll drift apart. So um, that's basically it, uh, the chorus is uh, more kind of energy than uh, other kind of choruses. And um, yeah, you have some good kind of leads um, separating each kind of section, great lead solo. And uh, that is overall the album so we got uh, a fair few tracks 12 tracks compared i think it's 12 tracks i'm not going to go through counting because that will uh, sound ridiculous and we've got one two three and um so the previous track uh, fall from grace only had nine tracks unless you get a bonus which is uh, 10. now uh, if you actually want to get the physical album um you can't actually get the bonus i think the bonus is only for mp3s because when i've looked uh, you can only get the nine 
which takes the album to about 43 minutes in length, which is long for some people. Like some people do believe that's a great length, uh, but uh, for metal, I think that's kind of uh, the short side of metal. You don't want anything shorter than that. Uh, this album, Purgatory, is around 53 minutes, I believe, and then the offering is one hour, one minute or so. So, um, yeah, it's back to uh, longer. There is solos in like every bloody track apart from the one. The offering misses um, two, I think, maybe, and then has some short solos. The solos for this are uh, pretty great. Um, but, uh, yeah, as I say, the offering has um, a dark and interesting concept, again, with uh, the kids being sacrificed to keep the world good and everything, but um, it's not exactly working that way. And then one of the kids rise up and then uh, kill the cult and something like that. I haven't really followed the story uh, very well, even though I did look up the lyrics and I thought I had it, but um, then the singer said at the end, um, the kid rises up and actually gets revenge. It's like, I did not get that in the slightest. <laughs> I just got a lot of kids died and then just each of their perspectives, that's what I picked up on. So um, yeah, Purgatory, again, a really interesting uh, concept and it's so dark and everything, but it's quite interesting because I don't think a lot of people would touch on something of a little eight-year-old, seven-year-old girl killing herself because her dad drove her to do it, and then a mum also dying, and the dad being mean to the girl, and then the girl being mean to the dad, and then the dad having to say goodbye and everything, and then the good ending is that the girl's dead and so is the mum but at least they're together so uh, I don't think a lot of people would do that just because people don't like to talk or show dead kids so um, it's interesting and unique because of that because you don't get a lot of stuff talking about dead kids oh god this is going terrible <laughs> um, it's I just think it's interesting um, I'm not sick in the head it's just um, a really dark story and it's just a, a great kind of concept and it pulls at the heartstrings, it makes you feel because it's such a dark thing. And um, the tone, as I say, the tone through Iris is absolutely perfect. Before I knew what the story was, I did think this was a very dry album that sounds kind of like anything else. It's just like, why is it so dark and bland? Because Fall From Grace is just so high energy and powerful and then the offering is just so grand and epic and huge and everything. And then this album is just darkness and uh, nothing really else going on. So it's just like, why when they have epic and then really upbeat, fun stuff, why would they have this album just ripped of all of that? Because it's epic and fun and then they decided let's not do that. It's just like, why would you do that? But now that I know the story, obviously, I think it works extremely well. It's very, very, very dark. And um, again, I say um, there is always something of a kind of sweetness that lingers through each track. Um, maybe there's an odd one where it doesn't, but uh, from what I kind of gathered, the majority, if not all of them, do have a lingering uh, childlike essence to it and that is kind of like the keys and everything and even sometimes the guitar leads where things try and get cheerful and everything but lyrically as well as the kind of heavy beefy rhythm and everything it keeps everything grounded in sheer dark and depressing but with that angel like thing that runs through it and then the final track it does that kind of 180 when it's still dark but it's more kind of a niceness to it so I think the fact that they kind of conveyed that in sound I think is absolutely incredible. Lead solos again absolutely phenomenal the lead tone and uh, the talent of this guy and the feeling he can put through is absolutely incredible it would be good if he did it on every track and a solo and lengthen some solos up and just really go at it but from what you get like it is absolutely amazing it is fine <laughs> the way it is it's just he's so good you're always going to want more and um Lyrically, as I say, it's quite difficult to follow. Like, I've got the concept because the guy's gone and basically said so in an interview, and um, that it's about a girl who was born, mum died in childbirth, dad drinks a lot, hates the girl, girl kills herself, she's stuck in purgatory, and then she finds a mum. So it's like, that I know, but obviously there's 12 tracks, so there's a lot kind of going on in between them, so it's just piecing them together. 
And as I say, he jumps between people to people, like from the ashes is the dad, past the veil, I think is the mom, the chosen one, is the girl. And then uh, rest my child, I believe, is again the dad. So it's just like, who knows if I'm missing, maybe Darkest Sims, the dad, for all I know. Like there was a track where it was like, I think it starts as the dad, but then the chorus is the girl, and then the final message is the girl. What track was that? Uh, my piece, I think it was. Um, so I think that was jumping girl to dad, but then I didn't even have a big clue if that right if it's just always the girl. It's very difficult to follow with that. And then uh, the way he kind of writes and everything, it's all quite kind of deep and big. It's not straightforward, so it's hard to follow. Um, but another thing I like, obviously, uh, the uh, second track from The Ashes, you have a female uh, singing, which uh, brings um, a nice change so you do kind of hear the mom. And then with my piece, you have an actual little girl come in to record the message, her death uh, note to her dad. And uh, I just think that uh, really hit hard. Like if it was just the male singer, it seriously wouldn't connect and hit you as much as a little girl doing it. It would be nowhere near as creepy. It would be nowhere near as intense. So I really like that it was that little girl that they brought in to uh, do that. It was just so kind of powerful and uh, everything. So before I knew the concept and everything, I thought it was just kind of a dry album that was just very broody and not much in the way of fun. So I would have given it less than I gave uh, Fall From Grace. Now Fall From Grace I think it was an 8.3 and The Offering uh, an 8.5 and I would have given this an 8. But now that I know the meaning and uh, the vibe that I didn't like actually goes with the lyrical content, therefore I appreciate it and I can understand this and everything. And um, there is a lot kind of here and everything. And um, it's not the most memorable either, because obviously it's not as fun and uh, as the others and everything, but not as catchy. So it's not memorable because of that, but um, it just means that uh, you can get a lot of listens out of this and um, things can kind of be fresh. And it's just like, oh, I forgot about that and I forgot about this. So that's a good and a bad because some people will kind of uh, push past this because it's hard to remember and they'll just kind of say well it's not memorable and then others will just be like there is a lot to this therefore i can keep going back to it so uh, good and bad with that but uh with as i say with the meaning and uh, the vibe now fits with the lyrical content i would give this an 8.3 again I don't think it's as good as The Offering, because The Offering was huge and epic and also had the concept, it had leads. I don't think it had as much leads as this album, Purgatory, but it was just a more catchy album. It had a dark concept, a great concept. It had this huge anthemic stuff with keys and choir, and it had the female guest and uh, other things, choirs, orchestra and things. As for uh, this, although it does have the female guest, it was in The Offering and it has a little girl, and it does have keys although they're uh i think they're a bit duller here and um it's not as catchy and it's darker um because that's just not as fun and um it's on par with uh, fall from grace fall from grace is a really fun album which is very easy to listen to this one um obviously it gives you kind of a dark uh, kind of mood and everything and it is very dark and serious so um it's not as easy to listen to as the other two for that either but the solos are great and the concept is great and the solos are great and the voice is great. So, uh, and it has more solos, more length than the previous album and everything and it's a concept which the previous album doesn't. So even though the previous album is more fun, that is basically why it's 8.3 and this is not fun but uh, because of everything else it keeps it on par with that. So 8.3 from me and that is it for this album. So, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.